So, if you like jigsaw puzzles, here's one for you, a big one. It's got two and a half thousand pieces, more than a hundred feet long, and it's spent more than 500 years buried in a river tank, in a river bank in South Wales. It's a 3D one, and we're talking about a sunken ship. It's dubbed the Welsh Mary Rose. It was discovered two decades ago, and now its restoration has reached a key stage. Tomas Morgan is in Portsmouth to tell us more. Now, if this is part of the jigsaw puzzle, Tomas, um, I think we're going to need some heavy, heavy lifting equipment. Yeah, we will do. So this kind of slightly bizarre looking device, which looks a bit like a submarine, that's the freeze dryer. And the final pieces of this ship have been in here for about roughly three months. And every one of those two and a half thousand pieces have had to undergo a really lengthy process to get to this position, the position that they're hard enough and strong enough to be put back together. They were soaked for a number of months, if not longer, depending how big the woods were, to get rid of all the impurities. They were then ingested with wax to strengthen them up. And then the last process to put in this massive freeze dryer between here and South Wales, so they were hardened up so they could be put back together. And we're here in Portsmouth because they had to be split between South Wales and here on the site of the Mary Rose because of the time constraints and the number of pieces that they were simply couldn't all do it in one place. Now we've also been looking at what this ship will be will look like when it's finally put back together and how they'll look to do that. Uh, this is a one to ten scale model and this is a same scale person about a six foot tall person yeah. and so this gives you an idea of the size and scale. Well, I'm here. about that height, so actually, yeah. gosh, I would just be dwarfed. So, me. yeah, you imagine you're this At person. 30 metres long, weighing 25 tonnes, when it's fully rebuilt, Newport will have the only 15th century ship on exhibit anywhere in the world. But with 2,500 individual pieces, the challenge now will be putting it back together. This one is basically like a huge flat pack jigsaw puzzle without instructions. We have a big challenge here in that this is the uh, really as far as I know, the largest attempt to reconstruct a, a wooden archaeological ship um, once it's been dry. It started off as hundreds, but now thousands of pe people are queuing outside, and it's to see this. It's a boat dating back to the 1400s. The original wreck was found back in 2002. Whilst building for the city's new art centre was taking place on the edge of the River Usk, workers came across the remains seven metres deep in mud. And it's taken the best part of 20 years for each individual piece of wood salvage to go through a lengthy process of soaking, waxing and drying so that it can be reassembled safely. Toby and his team believe it was built from Basque Country wood, launched around 1449 and involved in the lucrative wine trade between Portugal and Bristol. It fell into the water, it's thought, was being repaired in Newport Dock later that century. So this is the wow moment, what do you yeah. think? <laughs> Much of the ship was dried in Portsmouth on the naval base which is home to the UK and possibly the world's most famous 16th century ship, the Mary Rose. The museum built around the naval vessel has been a major tourist attraction for the city on the south coast and comparisons between these two ships can easily be drawn. Each one, each wreck has got different things to offer. This is a beautiful big ship of a certain period, which is a warship. Your ship is a, a smaller ship, but it's a trading vessel of a period that's earlier, that's built in a different way. So, you know, the significances are that they're both highly significant. This is such an amazing project, and I've got to see it through. So even if it takes decades, I'll see this through, and that'll be... Um, I don't think I have another one in me, I think. <laughs> I'll just finish this and... Uh, retire. The final pieces of wood will be transported from Portsmouth back to Newport today, so the building process of this, the world's largest 3D jigsaw, can finally, after two decades, begin. I guess now's the time to have a look and see if everything is perfect as expected. <laughs> So I'm clearly not an expert, so we've brought someone in who can explain a little bit more about this wood here. We've got Dan Snow. Just, just talk to us, I guess, about this wood, what makes it special, why it's so significant. 
Well, it is very special and significant. I mean, it's very exciting for me. It's the first time I've ever done this close to it. And I'm just looking at it now. What you've got here is a, a selection, a kind of random selection of wood from this ship. Uh, it is, you've got the, the deck planking, the stuff that the sailors would walk on. It looks like you've got strakes, which is the sort of, the, the planking down the side of the ship, so the skin, but you've also got frames, like the ribs of the ship sticking up. So you've got a really nice selection here. Just some of the 6,000 pieces of wood that have been recovered. And the most amazing thing is that this was from the high mountainous, we think now, from the high mountainous country, 100 miles inland in northern Spain. So it's being felled up there, around 100 years old, give or take. It's being brought down to the coast and it's being built in, turned into this ship in the Basque country. It's designed for trade. This, this wood would have sailed France, northern Spain, Portugal, maybe into the Mediterranean, and then up to the Severn Estuary and up to Newport and Bristol. And as well as that, in here you've got all sorts of little, you've got marks of, of carpenters, of, you've got the, the marks made by the iron nails as blacksmiths were hammering them in here. So this might look like a bunch of old wood, but actually it's a treasure trove. It's a kind of time capture that tells you all about the 15th century, a time when England was at war with itself, England just finished fighting France. And actually something that I find amazing is when this wood was a sapling, it's just a weird thought, uh, it, Europe was experiencing the Black Death, the plague, 100 years before this ship. So it's not just a connection to the ship, but of a whole period of history, the whole period of medieval history. And I guess now, as we mentioned so many times, the rebuild process can finally begin. But in terms of its significance, historical significance, compared to other ships, like the Mary Rose based here, the Vasa in Sweden, where does this rank? Every ship is so special because every ship represents, it's like with some archaeologists looking for, paleontologists looking for fossils. Every ship represents a kind of key point in our human journey. And each one of these ships, you see different technological developments. And this ship fits at a time when Britain, England, France, Spain is about to explode onto the world stage and cross the Atlantic and discover new worlds. And this is just a, a mile post on that extraordinary journey. And I guess as we, as we move forward, we, we discover other ships in the, in the water. We've found another two over the last two years, I, I'm told. You know, is there a place and is there money there? Should we be taking anything we find out of the water or should we picking and choose which ones are the most important ones and how significant they are and will the public be interested in them, I guess? We're well, talking to the wrong guy because if it was up to me, I'd have all of these <laughs> out in museums all over the glistening museums all over the country. No, of course, we have to be careful and we have to, we have to, we live in tough times and we have to really isolate and focus on the ships that we feel have got a strong local connection like Newport. This has got such great grassroots support in Newport and that tell us something, as I say, in filling in that important record in the development of this wonderful technology. And I guess final question, can this be a tourist kind of hub for Newport as kind of the Mary Rose has been for the south coast of Portsmouth? Yes, definitely. Partly because we have these extraordinary materials and, and, uh, and the artefacts. So many things to tell us about life in that period of the Middle Ages, which people love. People love medieval history. But also because nowadays we've got the technology to realise it. We've got 4D. We've got all these new things that make that visitor experience so special. It's not just looking at wood. It is you can go there and immerse yourself in that history. Dan Snow, thank you so much. So uh, over the next kind of hour or so, the team will be taking all this wood slowly and carefully out of the freeze dryer, loading it onto the lorry and then driving it back to Newport. And then the three, four, five, possibly 10 year process now of putting it back together will begin and finding a home in Newport. So uh, the pub, as Dan said, the public can come and view it and appreciate it for all of its worth and glory. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas. That is quite some project.